The House has resumed. Uh, members, the House has been debating the second reading of the Gambling, Gambling Harm Reduction Amendment Bill and the Honourable Ruth Dyson has the call. She has just under six minutes remaining. Mr Speaker. Honourable Ruth Dyson. Mr Speaker, I'm very happy to pick up the um, conversation that I started just before the dinner break when I was talking about the fact that I believe that the member who's whose name is attached to this bill, Teodora Flavel, introduced it with the very best intentions and that his aim was to introduce legislation and have it passed that would genuinely reduce the harm that's done in our communities through gambling. Um, it is my view and the view of other experts in this area that because of the deal that had to be done between uh, the Minister Chris Tremaine and the member Teodora Flavel and, and the instructions the Select Committee got to alter the bill, that actually this bill um, doesn't just not reduce harm, but actually has the potential to cause more harm in the community. And it's with deep regret that I'll therefore um, be voting against it. Um, I've looked through the media response to the um, bill, as was reported back from the Select Committee. Um, Andre Frude of the Problem Gambling Foundation had this to say, Mr Speaker. He said the bill is not going to live up to its name. It was put forward as a harm minimisation bill, but effectively that's all been stripped away. This is one of the groups that supported the introduction of this legislation most strongly. Um, the Associate Professor of a school, at the School of Population Health from Auckland University went so far as to say that he wanted the bill scrapped because of the changes that were put forward at the Select Committee. The, um, Social Policy Research and Parliamentary Affairs Unit Director Major Campbell Roberts from the Salvation Army, who has been a regular contributor to important debates of social justice and social policy in this Parliament over many years, said the proposed changes did nothing for problem gamblers, those at risk, or communities wishing to minimise the impact of gambling. For those of us who deal with the problems created by pokey machines every day, this bill, on balance, will make matters worse. So that's from Campbell Roberts of the Salvation Army, and I really think that it's a responsibility of this parliament not to listen to the rhetoric, not to listen to the slogans, but to listen to the people who deal with the impact of problem gambling in our homes, in our families, and in our communities. And, and those three experts that I quoted who have had very close involvement with the bill right from its introduction said vote against it, scrap it. Um, there's more in the media and uh, perhaps at later stages of the bill um, I'll be able to provide the member with more information um, in that regard. I don't have it right here but I'm happy to pick up that challenge. It's a, a good one actually. Um, Mr Chairman, I just want to make a couple of brief comments about in relation to the comments that were made in earlier contributions about the large number of submitters who submitted on this bill and the overwhelming number of submitters who were opposed to the bill, it is my view that the bill was misrepresented to those organisations. They were told by the Pokey Trust that the passing of Te Urua Flavel's bill would mean that their organisation, be it the local rugby club or bowls club or yacht club or whoever, would get no money in future. And I don't believe that that was the intention of the bill, and I don't believe at all that had the bill been passed as it, had been, as it was introduced, that that would have happened. It was not the intention of the legislation to deprive any of those community organisations of any funding. And Mr, Mr Chairman, I resent the fact that our great community and voluntary organisations are misled about the intention and the outcome of the bill. The intention actually was to stop the slicing of the profits from the pokies to the trusts and stop it going into the community. The intention was to make sure that where the money was taken from, it was put back. So where there were large numbers of pokies in the lowest income areas, and all that money came out of those communities through the pokey machines, that the money went back into those communities, into those voluntary organisations, into those sports clubs, into those social service organisations that do so much good. So, Mr Chairman, I regret not being able to vote for this legislation. I would have loved to have had a bill I could have supported. I resent 
the fact that I believe that our great community and voluntary organisations were misled by the trusts in an effort to get them to oppose the legislation, and I don't think that they've had that rectified um, in the interim since then. I hope that at some time in the future, this Parliament has the ability, through the force of numbers, to take a more courageous step than is going to be um, obvious in this legislation, and that, in fact, perhaps in the debate tomorrow, we can further our opposition to the proliferation of gambling, given the shonky deal that this Parliament will be voting on tomorrow when we look at the Sky City Convention Centre being traded off for a huge increase in poker machines. The very day after, Te Urua Flavel tries to reduce the harm of problem gambling in our society, unsuccessfully I believe, but I know the intention was genuine, to the very day after that we'll be voting on that shonky Sky City deal. Speaker. Uh, Sam Lotto-Enger. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's a pleasure for me to take a call on this, the second reading of the gambling.